So far we've considered the idea of surfaces being defined by functions of x and y, with z being the third output variable. Sometimes though we're not going to look at functions, but relations. So, so far all we've looked at have been functions. It's also possible to build relations where there's multiple outputs for a single input uh, when you're looking at several variable functions. The same basic ideas that we talked about earlier apply when we talk about points on a real line, we say it belongs to R or R1. Uh, if we have pairs of points, they belong to R2, and triples belong to R3, or 3D space is the most easy, easiest way to visualize these sets of points. So we're going to look at some very simple relations in this course, uh, because there's actually graduate work you can do when you look at relations. Uh, going forward in two and three dimensional space. There's some fun tie-ins of algebraic geometry to encryption and uh, anyway, huge hosts of complicated relations that can be created and imagined for various purposes. We're gonna stick with fairly vanilla ones in this course. For example, if we were in R2 and asked ourselves, well, what shape is defined by the relation X squared plus Y squared equals 25? I think we'd all leap pretty quickly if you flash back to that time to a circle, circle of radius five. On the X and Y axes, circle of radius five. Simply because every point belongs to a triangle with X and Y, and X squared plus Y squared equals a constant, the constant radius squared, and all the points on a circle always satisfy that same distance from the origin criteria, they're all R squared, they're all five squared away from the origin. Sorry, they're all five away from the origin, so x squared plus y squared equals five squared. Now, we haven't really covered this in the fall term, but it's an important idea of just about shifting graphs, only here shifting relations. What happens if we keep the 25 the same, but put a minus two and a plus one inside our squared? So it's our intuition says this should be a circle again, but somehow it's different than the last one. Well, one way to look at this is to ask, well, there's a few different ways to look at it. I like to think of it in terms of shifting. If we just had ignored everything else, so ignore all this for a second, and had y equals x minus two squared, we would have shifted things to the, remember it's the opposite of what you expect, we would have shifted it to the right by two. The y value being plus one, I'm gonna argue it means it shifted down by one. So at negative one, two is going to be the center of a circle of radius five. Now it's gonna to be too big for me to sketch out here, but try to do it justice. The radius is still going to be five and it's going to be centered at two, negative one. Again, this is an x, y plot. Can you verify this? Well, I hope so, <laughs> we can val validate this. One checkpoint that we can use is, well, if that's the center and this radius is five, then the point two, five, does it satisfy the equation? And I would argue it does, because if we plug it into our function here, we'd have two minus two squared plus, oh, sorry, the radius is five. That means it would be two, four. This point here would be the point two, four. And then we'd have y plus one, that's four plus one squared. Well, that's zero plus five squared. Oh yeah, that's 25, check. And we could also check the left to right, so we could check out here. What, what's this point on the graph? This is five in this direction, so the x would be negative three, and the y coordinate would be negative one. Does that also satisfy our equation? Well, we'd have negative three minus two more, negative three minus two more squared, plus negative one plus one. And you can see, I hope, why we need to shift the center to be at two, because then when x is two, this disappears, it cancels. When y is negative one, I add one and this term disappears. So that's why the center being at negative one and at x equals two uh, 
is arranged the way it is so that these sort of are, it's x minus the center, y minus the center. Uh, in this case here, we have minus 3 minus 2, that's minus 5 squared. Oh, that's 25. Check. So let me just take a look at the next page. I don't think, yeah. We don't have a general formula there. But it's worth noting that x minus a squared y minus b squared equals r squared r squared has a center at a b. The important thing to notice is that we're implying a negative sign, a difference in here to make that center work out the way we expect. Now that's all well and good, but that's history in some sense. We're more interested right now in forms and shapes and relations and their graphs in three variables or in three dimensions. What if we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 25? Well, it shouldn't be a huge shock. We're not going to go through the derivation of it here. But we have basically the same circular form. You take some drawing of uh, lots of triangles to show that Pythagoras does apply in 3D here. But if we pick any point on the circle, uh, they're all the same distance away from the origin. And what do you get when you pick a set of points all the same distance from the origin? You get a sphere of radius. Again, this is r squared. So a sphere of radius 5. And let's be clear here, centered at the origin. All right. Now we can make this complementary thing. Uh, sometimes we don't really want a sphere, we just want to know how to calculate distances. Well, what we just said here is that if x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared defines a sphere, I can work backwards and say that the distance to the origin, which is what we just called r there, is going to equal the x-coordinate plus the y-coordinate plus the z-coordinate each squared. Uh, so the distance to the origin of any point x, y, z is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's going to be a sort of complementary result that we're going to use going forward in the course. Just comes nicely out of the sphere definition. What else can we say? Well, again, by analogy more than proof, what if we wanted to center a sphere at this, these locations? It would certainly be the same form we just saw. At, uh, radius 5, so that would be our r squared on the right hand side. And just remember what we saw in the last example with circles. If we want the center to be at 2, that means everything's relative to 2, so we need the difference between the x coordinate on the sphere and 2, and difference implies subtraction. And we do that for all three. There's perfect symmetry here, and we would typically write this as z plus 1 all squared instead of minus negative 1, but that's how it should be interpreted. The center at negative 1 would show up as z plus 1 in our quadratic term for that form. And once again, we can leverage this for one last formula. Sorry, let me just erase here. Distance to the center. This 25 is a radius, which is the distance squared to the center at 2, 4, negative 1. So this last result is going to give us one final piece of information for this unit. We're giving a formula for the distance between any two points in 3 space, in R3. Pick a point here that's A, B, C. Pick a point over here that's x, y, z. The distance squared between them, well think of what we just did here. Here we said x, the distance from x to 2, y to 4, and z to 3, that total distance between the point x, y, z and 2, 4, 1 is equal to a constant. Well the distance squared then is going to be x minus a, y minus b squared, and z minus c squared. And so the distance between the any two points is just the square root of all that together. And finally, z minus c squared. 
So the distance between the point ABC and the point XYZ, we just find the difference in the first coordinate, difference in the second, difference in the third, square each of those, and take the whole square root. It's very similar to Pythagorean formulas and it's a very nice extension to three dimensions. Again, this isn't a proof, it's an argument by analogy, uh, but I'm not lying to you, it's actually true. <laughs> so we are going to use both these circle formulas in your assignment for this unit, and you're also going to be using this distance between points as a, a tool as we go through the entire rest of the course. Not a huge, not a fundamentally important tool, but one that will come in handy from time to time. So it's important to memorize that and understand where it comes from.